Hi, let's talk about the blood supply to pancreas and duodenum, otherwise known as the anastomosis between the celiac and superior mesenteric artery. In this video, we'll discuss the vascular supply of the duodenum and pancreas and describe in detail the collateral blood flow between the celiac trunk and superior mesenteric arteries. When we think of the blood supply to the duodenum. This is also going to be the blood supply to the head and neck of the pancreas. And there will be two major sources for this. The celiac trunk, specifically the gastroduodenal branch of the common hepatic artery, as well as the superior mesenteric artery. So let's walk through these connections. But before we do, I'd like to look at this schematically. So down here in the lower corner, here is our gastroduodenal artery. The gastroduodenal artery has several branches, but specifically pertaining to this region, it's going to give off a posterior superior pancreatic duodenal and an anterior superior pancreatic duodenal. These branches are going to supply the duodenum and the head and neck of the pancreas with blood. Their counterparts are going to come from a branch of the SMA, known as the inferior pancreatic duodenal artery. This is going to divide into anterior and posterior branches, which will anastomose with the anterior and posterior superior pancreatic duodenal arteries. So this will provide a very rich framework of blood to the head and neck of the pancreas, as well as the duodenum. So let's, let's follow this pathway here. So from the celiac trunk, we have the common hepatic artery, the gastroduodenal artery. That gastroduodenal artery gives off the posterior superior pancreatic duodenal artery, as well as the anterior superior pancreatic duodenal artery. We can see that the SMA gives off the inferior pancreatic duodenal artery there with an anterior branch, which anastomoses with the anterior superior pancreatic duodenal artery, and a posterior branch, which anastomoses with the posterior superior pancreatic duodenal artery. In addition here, um, some branches from jejunal arteries in this region can supply blood to both the duodenum as well as the pancreas. But you're really going to want to burn these relationships into your mind. Moving medially from the, uh, the duodenum and the, the head of the pancreas, we can look at the blood supply to the body and tail of the pancreas, which is quite extensive. Again, I would say let's look at the schematic and let's start with the splenic artery, which is a branch of the celiac trunk, my favorite and most robust branch. So here we have a very torturous splenic artery. That splenic artery is running adjacent to the pancreas and sometimes uh, it will run through the, uh, the tissues of the pancreas. And it's going to give off three important branches, the first being the dorsal pancreatic artery. That dorsal pancreatic artery is going to transition into the inferior pancreatic artery, which runs the length of the pancreas. The next branch is known as the greater or the great pancreatic artery. It's somewhat of a misnomer because it tends to be smaller than the dorsal pancreatic artery. And then finally, there are arteries to the tail of the pancreas, or sometimes caudal pancreatic arteries. And these can all have the, uh, the possibility of anastomosing with one another. And they may also anastomose with the arteries that are involved in the supply of blood to the head and neck of the pancreas, as well as the duodenum, or those pancreatic duodenal arteries. So let's look at, uh, at this scheme. So here is the splenic artery. 
and see this very nice tortuous artery here. There is our dorsal pancreatic artery and it is continuing on as the inferior pancreatic artery which is running the length of the pancreas there. There's the greater pancreatic artery and it, that's anastomosing and then we have the arteries to the tail of the pancreas which is also anastomosing with that inferior pancreatic artery. And here we can see that there is an anastomosis between those pancreatic duodenals and the, uh, the inferior or dorsal pancreatic artery as well. And then finally, um, let's not forget about those jejunal arteries, which can supply both the, uh, the pancreas and the duodenum with blood. So two major sources, ultimately the celiac trunk and the superior mesenteric artery. So the celiac trunk is the dominant source of blood to derivatives of the embryonic foregut. The superior mesenteric artery is the dominant source of blood to the uh, derivatives of the embryonic midgut. And so as we have both foregut and midgut viscera present, it's natural for there to be anastomoses between uh, these vessels which serve them. So we've discussed the, uh, the various branches of the celiac and superior mesenteric arteries which serve the pancreas and duodenum. This is your summary slide. I thank you for your time.